It's very important to understand that the concept of a volar Barton's type is a displacement of the volar component of the end of the radius with the dorsal part intact. That's not just the dorsal articular surface, but also the dorsal metaphyseal cortex. And you will see this becomes very important in understanding the way of treating. The second important aspect is the fact that often we see an x-ray and it looks as if it's a single component of the volar concept or the articular surface and part of the metaphysis that's displaced and the carpus has gone with it. In fact, we have looked at a series of 48 of these cases with Dr. Diego Fernandez published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery and realized that the single component is very uncommon. There's far more often to have at least two component parts of this volar sheared fracture. It's very useful to get a preoperative CT scan. The position of the implant is very important. Strategically, it must go across to cover on the volar lunate facet side as well as the radial facet side. You will see that more clearly here as compared to here. What happens if it's not covered or not supported on the volar ulnar side, you will see displacement not only of that fracture fragment, but the entire carpus. And we realized that a number of years ago and reported in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery this observation. It's very important because once this occurs, it's very difficult to reestablish that. Looking at this animation with the implant that's not all the way supporting the volar lunate facet side, we see the carpus displacing, and within its displacing, it becomes not only radiocarpal problem, but radio ulnar problem as well. Not all plates are designed to cover the width of a volar distal radius. And there are many alternatives that one can use, including a second plate, a small cerclage that goes through the radiocarpal ligament and through the lunate facet fragment, or a small K-wire or two that's utilized. And we see in this animation how it's effectively covered the lunate and the radial side, and it makes it much more stable. So this is what you might see on a sagittal view in a CT scan. You can't tell if it's a single fragment or more. In a coronal CT, you have a sense that the radial component is relatively small while the lunate facet is larger. The three-dimensional CT does not give you the true picture, but it does suggest that it's more of a single fragment. This cartoon here shows what happens in the traditional shearing fracture, and that is the carpus goes with the volar lunate and volar fragment, but the dorsal cortex, and this is very important, the dorsal cortex remains intact. If that's the case, the implant serves as a buttress. What's meant by that is by pushing back the volar lunate or volar distal radius fragment against the intact cortex, it provides stability. In this case, the stability really is provided by the contact pressure of the volar plate against the dorsal cortex. We use the standard screws, but in many cases, the screws are of secondary importance. So we illustrate intraoperatively, we see this and a functional outcome. In this animation, we're projecting a large single volar shearing fracture. Notice the carpus that's displaced volarly with an intact dorsal cortex. 
This is often seen in a younger person. And what happens by pushing up the volar component, it provides contact pressure, compression against the intact dorsal component. Now, if there was an unrecognized fracture that extended into the dorsal metaphysis, this is what happens. The whole component displaces. So we found that in a large series of patients evaluated with this, if the patient is over the age of 55 and presents with this fracture, it looks like, for all intents and purposes, it's a volar shearing fracture. One has to suspect that there's a fracture line going in the metaphysis here. And if you try to push this up, you will see this occur. The strategic point here are two. One is when seeing a volar shearing fracture, recognize that that's what appears to be a single fracture fragment volarly more likely has at least two components. Sometimes the ulnar lunate facet part of it may be somewhat small. Therefore, support of this fragment is critical that the plate or whatever is used goes all the way across. The second critical component is that in an older age patient, arbitrarily over the age of 55, you have to suspect that there's a dorsal break in the metaphysis and the cortex. And if you use the plate as a buttress to push this up, it will create dorsal displacement and a loss of fixation. In those cases, the plate should involve locking screws that will hold the distal fragment, and so you don't have to push up at all against the dorsal cortex. With the belief that more transparency in the practice of medicine will enable substantial progress, ICUC is launching a cutting-edge app to improve learning of surgical procedures in orthopedics. The app gathers complete, unchanged and consecutive series of surgical interventions. Independent orthopedic surgeons record the interventions from pre-op to functional result to ensure complete recording, including surgical shortcomings. Download the app from the Apple App Store and access for free to a broad library of orthopedic case studies. Try ICUC app and discover a new learning experience.